Okay, so today I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the labs that you're going to be doing and some information about some of the key terms that are going to be important for the lab. So, let me make this work. Oh, I, I apologize. Okay, so some calculations that you want to keep in mind uh, for these upcoming labs. The first is excretion rate. So, this is the amount of substance that you're excreting. So, when you think excretion, you want to think urine. So the amount of substance that's going to be present in the end product in the urine, what's in your pee? And this comes from the amount that goes through the filtrate. So if you remember, as we're going to cover and spend a lot of time on, there are um, three different processes that occur in the nephron. The first is the filtrate. So this is the substances coming from the blood um, filtered into the, that original primary filtrate. And you're going to have at different points in the nephron, substances are going to be secreted. Secreted comes from the blood into that filtrate. And then substances are also going to be reabsorbed. And reabsorbed substances go in the reverse direction from the filtrate into back into the blood. And so the amount that is at the end product in the urine is going to be all the things that were added into that filtrate, which is the filtered stuff and the secreted stuff. Subtracted from that, you take out all of the things that were reabsorbed, okay? The amount of substance that's excreted equals the amount filtered plus the amount secreted minus the amount reabsorbed. And, and again, it depends on three factors. It depends on the filter load, so how much comes into it initially, the rate that things are secreted, so the amount coming back into the blood or coming back from the blood, um, and then the amount reabsorbed going back from filtrate into blood. So again, secreted blood into filtrate, reabsorbed, filtrate back into the blood. If the amount of solute excreted per minute is less than the filtered load, so if you are peeing out less than you originally put in, then some of that was reabsorbed, some of that was taken back into the bloodstream. Um, however, if the amount of solute excreted per minute is greater than the filtered load, then some of it was secreted. So if you're ending up with more in the pee, more in the urine, then you originally filtered in, it had to come from somewhere. And so it had to have come from the blood and it had to have occurred during that secretion step. Okay. These are all simple things when you think about it. What helps me think about these different components is to try to picture the nephron and picture what's moving when. Okay. So this is that exact math visualized. So we have nephron arterial go into the glomerulus, and the amount filtered is the first thing that we look at for excretion, right, into the Bowman's capsule here from the blood into the urine. And so this is showing you that for this random solute, you've got 12 millimoles coming in filtered. You have some added in in secretion. Here we got three millimoles secreted. You have some reabsorbed. Here we have six millimoles re reabsorbed. So you take the filtered plus the secreted, subtract the reabsorbed, you end up with the amount excreted, the amount at the very end here, which for this mythical, mysterious solute is nine millimoles, okay? So this brings us to the key calculation that you're gonna use for this whole lab, and this is the idea of clearance. And clearance is the volume of plasma from which a substance has been removed by the kidneys per unit time. So how much has gone out of the blood into the, the excretion? So the volume of plasma, the other way that it's defined is the volume of plasma that contains the amount of a substance that has been excreted per unit time. And the clearance depends on a two major factors. It depends on the excretion rate, so how fast you're pulling something from blood and putting it into urine, which will depend on the concentration in the urine as well as the volume of urine. So rate has to, to take into account that volume. And clearance also compares that to the amount in the plasma. So you wanna have a reference point to see, okay, how much is coming out in the urine versus how much is in the plasma itself. And so clearance is gonna be the excretion rate over the plasma concentration. So a classic example or a classic substance used for clearance is inulin. So when we're talking about the clearance of inulin, the clear inulin is a substance 
that is freely filtered and neither reabsorbed nor secreted. So if you go back to that excretion formula, the excretion is going to just be the filtration because it's not reabsorbed and it's not secreted. Both of those are zero. And so in that case, we can say that the clearance in the, for inulin is equal to the filtration rate. So how quickly you're pulling something out of the blood just depends for inulin on the rate at which it's filtered. How quickly you're pulling something out of the blood depends just on the rate at which it is filtered because it's not reabsorbed and it's not secreted. So that is the only mechanism that it's moving. So the amount of inulin excreted in the urine is the amount that was filtered. It's our filtered load. So for inulin, the excretion rate is that filtration rate. Um, and you want to keep that in mind because um, inulin will frequently be used as a way of getting at and measuring the GFR, the glomular filtration rate. Okay. So for a substance that's freely filtered, the only thing happening is filtration, then clearance is equal to GFR, is equal to that filtration rate. So this is the math. So you would take to get clearance, you would take the concentration in the urine, you would multiply the rate at which you are producing urine. You divide that by the concentration in the plasma. Now pay attention to units here. Pay attention to units. The units at the end, the units you want to end with, are milliliters per minute. The units for clearance that you need to end up with are milliliters per minute. And so you want to make sure of two things. You want to make sure that your volume, your, your urination rate that you're calculating, the V here, the urination rate, is in that milliliters per minute. So you need to make sure that the urination rate, shown with the letter V, is in milliliters per minute. So this organism person is making two milliliters of urine a minute. The other thing you want to make sure is that your units for the concentration in the urine and the concentration in the plasma are the same. It doesn't matter what they are, those units are going to cancel. So if you look at the clearance formula here, you have 250 millimoles per liter times 2 milliliters per minute. Again, you want to make sure that that urine rate is in milliliters per minute. Divided by, in blood, we have 4 millimoles per liter. Now, it doesn't matter what the units are for urine concentration and plasma concentration. It only matters that the units are the same because when you do the math, you're going to cancel those units out. And the only units you're going to be left with are the urine rate units, which again need to be in milliliters per minute. So if we do that, show that in, in visual here, we have the amount filtered plus the amount secreted minus the amount reabsorbed for inulin. Those are all zero. So the amount excreted is equal to the amount filtered. So for this case, the clearance of inulin, the volume of plasma that contained the amount of inulin excreted is the volume of plasma that was filtered, which is our filtration rate. Because it's not secreted, because it's not reabsorbed, because the only thing happening is filtered, the volume of plasma that contained the amount of inulin that was excreted at the end is the volume of plasma that was filtered in that original filtration step, which is our filtration rate. Okay. Now, again, you can also use, um, if you don't have inulin, which um, you probably don't, you can use creatine creatinine, sorry, creatinine, to measure and estimate GFR. This is a byproduct of muscle metabolism. This is the data I'm going to give you. It's produced in the body. It's freely filtered. It's not reabsorbed. So it's going to freely filtered means it'll very easily pass from the blood into the kidney, into that filtrate. It's not reabsorbed, so it's not going to move back from the filtrate into the blood. However, a small amount is secreted. So instead of being a perfect one-to-one uh, -one ratio where clearance is GFR, like it is for inulin, for creatinine, it's only an estimate. So clearance is going to be a little bit greater than GFR for creatinine because, again, you do have that small amount secreted. For glucose, glucose is a different situation. Now, for glucose, the clearance of the substance is around zero because most of the time, for a healthy individual, glucose is going to be completely reabsorbed. You're not going to find any glucose in your urine. You are a healthy individual. You are not going to find any glucose in your urine. And so what you would do if you would see the math here is that the concentration in the urine is going to be zero. 
And so when you do the math, you have a zero there in the, the numerator. That means that the clearance rate for glucose is zero. And that tells you that the substance is not present in the urine anymore. It is fully reabsorbed. It is completely present instead in the plasma. So if you show that visually, amount filtered, we take in 125 mgs of glucose in that original filtration step. None of it is secreted, but all 125 mgs of glucose find their way back into the blood. The amount excreted is zero. The volume of plasma that contained zero mgs of glucose per minute is zero. Zero equals zero. Okay, which is kind of a silly way of phrasing it, but how the formula works out. Okay. When you're determining the fate of solutes, we're going to be looking at clearance. If your clearance is greater than your filtration rate, if there is more present than was filtered, then some of it had to be secreted. Some of it had to come from the blood back into the filtration. However, if the clearance rate is less than the filtration rate, then you know that it was reabsorbed. And whenever you get confused about which one is which, I always think of glucose. I use glucose as my example because I know glucose has a clearance rate of zero because none of it is found in the urine and all of it is reabsorbed. So if zero is less than my filtration rate, how fast and how hard my kidneys are working, then all of that substance had to have been reabsorbed. Okay. These are some typical clearance rates for common substances processed by the kidneys. Um, so inulin is the baseline here, which tells you what your GFR is. So typically, GFR is going to be 125 mils per minute. Things that are greater than that, things like creatinine and PAH, those have come into the renal processing via secretion. And that secretion has occurred. We've added more from the blood into that filtrate at other points besides that original filtration step. Things that are less than that have been reabsorbed. So most of the ions, we've reabsorbed almost all of it. Things like sodium, chloride, potassium, we reabsorb almost all of it. Glucose should be zero. You should be able to take in all of the, glu the glucose. The other thing I want you to know is that sodium and chloride are roughly equal. In our calculations, we're gonna be treating them as equal to each other. So we're gonna be saying that sodium and chloride have the same clearance rate when we calculate it, and we'll calculate it just for chloride and assume it's the same for sodium. Okay. That is the end of, of the little lab slides that I wanted to walk through. Um, make sure you read through the handout. And then I also posted videos about these concepts if you need more practice. The best resource I've found is the Khan Academy website. They go through a lot of this in a lot more detail. So check that out if you need more tips. Email me and set up a WebEx.